Hi everybody, we're going to introduce some watches today. Uh, so today we're introducing the Grand Seiko SPGX 347 and 349. What are these watches? Well, they are watches that I never ever thought Grand Seiko would introduce and I'm very pleased that they did. Uh, they are 34 millimeter quartz powered watches. Now, by the time I've said 34 millimeter and quartz, I'm sure half of you have returned off this video, but for those who are still with us, please bear with me because I think these watches are definitely worth your attention and that's why I even went to the effort of making this video about them, okay? Um, if you like dress watches, if you like vintage watches, you tend to prefer smaller sizes. And as you know, the marketplace is not exactly full of smaller size watches anymore. Um, in fact, like I, I did a survey and I couldn't find a 36 millimeter Patek in, the, in their catalog, which was like shocking to me. Um, but that is the world we live in. Uh, so luckily, Grand Seiko has come to the rescue. Now, I brought a few things for size comparison. Today I'm wearing a Patek 96. This is a 31 millimeter watch from the mid 1930s. It's one of my favorite watches ever. And I just love the way it fits. I have a six inch wrist, which is a little bit below average in terms of wrist size. Um, but you know, it just looks good. Like there's something very subtle and very charming about it. And uh, I'm, I'm into this size. I recommend the 96 to many, many, many of my customers. I just think it's a really important watch for people to have in their collection if they are a serious watch collector. Now, that is 31. Let's have a look at what 34 looks like. So this is the SBGX 347. The 347 is the white dial and the 349 is the navy dial, which you'll see soon. A little bit more wrist presence because the case is a little bit thicker and the case is obviously a little bit wider in diameter, um, but just also an excellent piece. Let's go one more size up, just for reference. This is the SPGW231. Uh, it's one of my favorite pieces in their modern collection. Manual wind, and it's basically like the great grandson of the Grand Seiko first. 37 millimeters, like, of really wearable size, especially for me. And there you have it. So we've seen 31, 34, and 37, okay? Hopefully by now, you'll be like, oh, the 34 is not bad. I could do that, I could wear that, right? Um, now you remember we said that this thing has the quartz movement in it, it's the 9F61 quartz movement. 9F61 quartz movement is interesting because uh, Seiko, who has basically invented the quartz movement and made that entire industry, is deservedly proud of their work with the quartz movement. And I brought this particular piece because I bet no one's actually ever seen the Seiko quartz movement. This is the SBG V238. They did it as a limited edition a few years back. And this is like the ultimate flex watch, troll watch, um, if you want to call it that, right? Because this thing has a display back. It's a quartz watch with a display back. But I brought it out because I wanted you guys to see what the quartz movement looks like up close. Like this is the exact same movement that's gonna be in that SBGX. And you know, it's a really pretty movement. Like it's decorated well. I like the way the plates look. You know, okay, fine. You don't have any wheels moving around, but I can live with that. I'm into it, I like it. You know, I'll show you in comparison, for instance, like this is what the mechanical movement looks like. Also excellent and has, you know, the beating heart. But, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily discount the quartz movement on, uh, on the basis of movement finishing, that's for sure. Okay, let's have a closer look under the macro bench at the SBGX and SB, uh, SBGX 347-349. So the white dial and the blue dial, um, you know, the big difference between these two is that it's not just color, it's actually also the texture of it. The texture of the white dial is actually a grain finish, whereas the blue dial is a gloss finish. And hopefully you can see it under the macro bench. Um, when it's a little bit dark, you get an even better sense of it. As you can see, the hands and the markers are done as well as they always are to Grand Seiko's very exacting standards. Um, they catch any glimmer of light. You know, this is the reason why they do these mirror-polished mirror um, markers, right? The idea is that, well, 
we don't want to use luminescent material. We want something that's so shiny that even a slight bit of light is going to set it off and it's going to be legible at night. All right? Close case back on this. I haven't taken the sticker off. Uh, but the case style and shape, if you liked the SBG W231, right, the case style and shape is basically the same. It's just been, it's just been shrunken down a little bit. Okay. Now let's have a look at the Navy dial. Oh. There's the Navy dial. There's the Navy dial. As you can see, the gloss is strong, but not in a bad way. It's a really beautiful color. Comes on a Navy strap. And uh, I, I think, and I'm not sure, this might be the same blue as the titanium uh, dress watch that Grand Seiko also has in their line at 38 millimeters. That's a boutique exclusive. The, the reference sadly escapes my mind right now, but there you go. Alrighty. So a little look at the SBGX 347-349, 34 millimeter quartz. Uh, they are available at our landmark store right now. It's not limited edition, it's regular production. Um, I hope they sell fast and I hope I can reorder them and keep them in stock at the store all the time because honestly, like, I really like it. And I think that if you were someone who was thinking about something like even a Patek 96, um, but obviously didn't have a budget to stretch to a Patek 96, this would be a really, really, really fun option. All right, that's about it for now. And thanks for watching.